Now talking about pathophysiology of pain, we should talk about pain receptors, pain pathway and pain modulation and also a little bit about pain fibers. Now talking about pathophysiology of pain, we should talk about pain receptors, pain pathway and pain modulation and also a little bit about pain fibers. Okay. So what are the pain receptors? Like you have different receptors for touch, pressure and like for example Raffinis and Orgrins or Pessinians, Corpuscles. You also have a receptor for pain. What are the pain receptors? Pain receptors are basically free or I can say naked nerve endings. So free nerve endings are the pain receptors. And these pain receptors can perceive thermal and mechanical injury or insult. So they can perceive extreme temperature, they can perceive extremes of mechanical tension building in the tissues. So we can classify these receptors into mechanoreceptors which basically are concerned with mechanical tension. We can also classify have another set of receptors called thermal or thermomechanoreceptors which can perceive extremes of temperature. See, you know, even severe cold, a very, very low cold or very, very low temperature is associated with pain. At the same time, like severe temperature is associated with burning sensation. Both are perceived as pain, right? So those are basically because of the stimulation of thermal mechanoreceptors. And then third set of receptors we call as polymodal. So these receptors basically, apart from pain, can also perceive various other sensations. Okay. So we have three sets of receptors. The mechanoreceptors and thermal mechanoreceptors are basically supplied by afferent nerve fibers which belong to A delta category and the polymodal are supplied by C type of nerve fibers. We will talk more about nerve fibers in the subsequent slides but for now remember mechanoreceptors and thermal mechanoreceptors are basically supplied by A delta type of nerve fibers and polymodal are supplied by C type of nerve fibers. So that was about the receptor. So from the receptor the pain has to travel through a pathway to reach the brain and that pathway you all understand is basically lateral spinothalamic tract right so let us look at the pathway the lateral spinothalamic tract actually begins with the first order neurons first order neuron basically supplies the somatic tissue or whatever the affected part of the body from there the first order neuron travels up to a synapse formation on the posterior horn of the spinal cord. So the cell bodies of this first order neurons are staying in dorsal nerve root ganglion. So it has two arms. One arm goes to the periphery, the tissue where it is supposed to perceive the pain. The other arm goes to the second order neuron in the posterior horn of the spinal cord where it synapses. So from this synapse, the second order neuron originates and it decussates to the opposite side immediately. So if the MCQ is asking you, the decussation of pain fibers or pain pathway occurs at what level? It occurs at the level of entry into the spinal cord. See, for example, fine touch. Fine touch does not decussate immediately, right? But the pain fibers decussate immediately. That is why you, you get the differential loss of sensation when you are dealing with a transaction of spinal cord like in brown sackward syndrome. So the point to remember here is that decussation happens at the level of entry into spinal cord. And then it ascends up to reach the thalamus. From thalamus, the third order neurons. Third order neurons begin from the thalamus and they are projected to the sensory cortex. You know, there is a sensory and motor homunculus. Depending on which side of the body the nerve fibers are originating from, they are projected onto the concerned homunculus. And that is where we perceive the sensation of pain. But if you look at this image carefully, you will also see that there is limbic system or limbic nuclei which is getting projection fibers from the thalamus and then there is also a reticular formation which is getting projection fibers from the thalamus. So there is some kind of interconnection between limbic nuclei and reticular formation and what is the significance of that? The significance is that if you look at the definition of pain itself we were talking about an emotional experience right. So that emotional involvement with pain see again the definition itself says it is an unpleasant experience. So this pleasant or unpleasant basically is an emotional experience right. So that emotional component to pain stems from this limbic nuclei. So you all know that limbic nuclei is concerned with emotional response because there are projection fibers which are 
attached to the limbic nuclei you are getting that emotional involvement whenever there is pain then you also have frequently patients coming to you and telling that they are unable to sleep because of pain so that coupling is actually because of the involvement of reticular formation so you know that reticular formation plays an important role in sleep wake cycle so because reticular formation also receives projection fibers from the thalamus from the pain pathway the patients are generally not able to sleep when the pain is bothersome okay so that was about the pain pathway now if you look at this image again you will also see a descending pathway right originating in pag pag is very aqueductal gray matter from there there is a descending pathway originating and which is almost reaching out to the the synapse between first and second order neuron in the dorsal horn of the spinal cord what is the role of this okay so for this you have to understand the concept of pain modulation right what is pain modulation so basically whenever someone is experiencing pain depending on the context he may experience it in an exaggerated manner or he may may not experience the pain at all a typical example is soldiers in the war so the soldiers in the war may not perceive the pain even when they have severe tissue injuries okay on the other hand you take your girlfriend if she is not a medico or even even if she is a medico just for a covid jab and my god the way she would scream it would tear your tympanic drums right that's because see this varying perception of pain is because of the involvement of pain modulation pathway so basically pain modulation pathway has an inhibitory effect on this synapse between the first order and second order neurons so it inhibits the perception of pain or the activity of these neurons and thus it has a kind of analgesic effect okay so the activation of this begins for the activation in the periaqueductal gray matter but there are other areas which also influence the descending pain modulation pathway now you have to remember two areas the first one is rostral ventromedial medulla and the second one is anterior cingulate cortex so in fact several mri studies where they have done a functional mri studies when you give a placebo saying that okay this is a pain killer and the patient experiences analgesic effect they have noted that these areas the rostral ventromedial area and the anterior cingulate cortex are functionally active okay so that was about pain modulation now i'll take you to next set of image in this image this is also a lateral spinothalamic tract this is basically again pain tract but you can see that there are two colored nerve fibers ascending up they are coming to the dorsal nerve root ganglion then the spinal cord they are decussating and then they are ascending up typical lateral spinothalamic tract but there are two colors why have we put two colored lines here that is because we can divide the lateral spinothalamic tract itself into two types the first one is neo spinothalamic tract and the second one is paleo spinothalamic tract okay. so whenever you hear the word neo that means it's new right and whenever you hear word paleo it means it's old you know paleo botany for fossils paleo means old okay so this neo spinothalamic tract is basically concerned with perception of acute pain neo acute pain okay and this is also associated with localized pain usually acute pain are generally localized right and this paleo is associated with diffuse pain and it is usually chronic pain again the neo set is comprising of a delta type of nerve fibers and the paleo set is comprising of c type of nerve fibers okay so remember neo acute pain localized and paleo diffuse chronic pain neo a delta fibers chronic c fibers okay so this is about the pain pathway